Hey everyone, so I'm here today to talk about the Harry Potter books and a problem I found with them. Now don't worry, it's not what you're thinking, so let's nicely move along from that. Um, what I want to talk about today is actually the style of writing. So the narration style in Harry Potter is that of a close third person narrator. What that means is um, the narration isn't coming from inside Harry's head. Uh, which would be first person, but it sticks very closely with Harry for the majority of the books. Obviously, um, Frank Bryce, uh, the narration sticks with him during the opening chapter of Goblet of Fire. But for the most part, anything that Harry doesn't experience in the Wizarding World, we the reader don't get to experience either. Now, as a fan, <sighs> problems, right? So obviously, if you go to... Uh, the Wizarding World in Orlando or LA, I think. Um, you're going to be able to walk through the world and certainly see the different sets and things and the incredible creations uh, from the House of Mina Lima um, when it comes to like signage on Diagon Alley or um, like advertisements in the Daily Prophet and the Quibbler and things like that, which is fantastic. But it means that there's certain stories we hear about, even classes we hear about in the Wizarding World that we don't get to take part in. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. Today I'm going to focus on runology or the study of ancient runes, which obviously Hermione takes, uh, Hermione takes, um, but Ron and Harry don't, which means we have hear about it only from Hermione's point of view. Um, during the films there isn't a single scene that's actually shot during a uh, an ancient runes class, and in Goblet of no, not Goblet of Fire. In Order of the Phoenix, um, Hermione only mentions two words that she actually got mixed up in her ancient runes OWL. So, part of the reason, in my belief from looking everything up, uh, part of the reason that a lot of students don't opt for ancient runes is it's difficult, obviously. But it's not simply a, a translation class. You don't take a load of ancient runes, scrolls, fire them into Google Translate and hope for the best. For obviously many reasons. But one of the big things that people don't talk about is a lot of the times with ancient runes, even in other media, not just Harry Potter, there are certain spells attached to the message itself. So this could be in D&D, for example. There's uh, explosive runes whereby... Runes are inscribed on a wall. Um, you go to read it, you read the runes, the message itself explodes. Explodes the runes. Um, but that's a simple and obvious example of Im imbuing, I suppose, the, the runes with a spell. Um, other things from ancient texts would be um, like a test of faith. You might hear... Um, curses over Egyptian pharaoh's tombs or something like that uh, or even from fairy tales like beware all those who enter here or only the pure of heart like like Thor and Mjolnir in the Marvel Universe you know he had to be worthy much like that with ancient runes if you think of knowledge as power you don't necessarily want your enemies having power so you don't necessarily want your enemies having that knowledge so a lot of the time there'll be um a purity test or a you need to have a moral compass aligned with the writer to be able to even read the message in the first place. Um, other things would be you need to daub like lamb's blood over your eyes, it's a bit gruesome, or messages can only be read by the light of a full moon. I've actually prepared a scroll here um, with some just basic charms on it. So uh, as you can see here, to the trained or untrained eye, that's absolute gibberish as you look at it there. So what we've got here is moral compass. Um, I made it as basic as possible. To be able to read this message, you have to not be a complete garbage person. Um, and also you need to have read it by candlelight, which is why I have the candle lit over here in my funky little crystal skull. The less we say about that Indiana Jones film, the better. But anyway, so yeah, um, I got a lot of the time, here is a list of alchemical symbols. You're getting a little bit of a glare there. But a lot of the time, it's a case of, again, people want to hide the message or they want to write stuff down that can be possibly passed on. 
but they still need to encode it so the wrong people don't see it. And ancient runes are a simple way of doing that. And a lot of the time, the reasons why they're so difficult to translate is um, it could be a completely imaginary, fictitious uh, alphabet or system of symbols. But again, the uh, purity test, you have to have a not necessarily a good moral compass. I mean, depending on what the um, the original author, I suppose, wanted. The author could be a terrible person, like we've seen it, where uh, you, you think one thing and then years later it turns out the author is a terrible person. But not in this case. Again, you want to not be a complete trash person to be able to read this. And you want to read it by candlelight. So again, sorry if I'm rambling, but I don't want to burn myself. We're just going to take our scroll. We'll complete gibberish and just run our candlelight along it here. And hopefully that should clear up the message for us. As you can see there, it's becoming a little bit more clear as the light of the flame yeah there we go so again if you're not a completely trash person you'll be able to read this and understand that indeed as you can see there Trans witches are witches. Fuck off, JK Rowling.